In the last episode of Eastern Napali, we still built a little bit on the kids coaster, but after having finished this area, we managed to finally go over to the go-kart track and started to build a little bit of a shed which goes over the main straight of the go-kart track and also over the queue. But in this episode, we're gonna spend a lot more time on the go-kart track, but now let's have a look and enjoy the next episode of Isla Napali. So, welcome everybody to the next episode of Isla Napali and we are going to start with a very little special thing over here, which is um, I made some decals, but I'm not entirely happy with them. They are, these are just to uh, test this a tiny bit. I had the issue that, um, I don't know, the alpha maps didn't really work out the way I hoped they would. I have to do it with a little bit of a different alpha map, which then is not really an alpha map, but I have no idea how exactly I should do this. Um, at the moment, as you can see, um, the, the decals did work somehow, but the problem is that they have a very sharp edge, so they don't really blend in well with everything else. They just they just completely have a sharp edge and, and just not connected at all. But I want to ge uh, have them going slightly into it, so like having a little bit of a transparency in the edges or on the edges of the decal to make them really go slightly into uh, the ground terrain. This is this is really what I want to do. So I, I will test a little bit more around with this piece um, to make it finally happen, but it, it already looks kind of good, kind of good. I think it's, it's okay. I don't want to complain too much about it because it, it really feels um, like a great addition to have some decals, but yeah, at the moment it is what it is and I hope to be able to improve it in the future so that we can really use this piece. However, in today's episode, it will be all about the go-karts track and I, I can't tell you how happy I am that we finally built in this. So, it was really on my list for quite a few weeks now and it really was something I wanted to do for such a long time. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk about a lot of things that I experienced myself while do go-kart driving and also um, a few things I do know from racing and stuff. So this is really a special episode for me. And if you um, do notice a few cuts in, in my voice over this episode, it is basically because my voice is, I don't know, it's, it's making some trouble today and I can't really talk for longer than like five minutes until I have a little bit of a, yeah, I don't know, I need to... I need to just stop and uh, yeah, just I, I, it's not cuffing, but it's kind of getting my voice right again. You can also hear that always. It's getting a little bit more rough in uh, before, but anyways. So as you can see, I wanted to bring something in that is really well known from racetracks and overall security measures for car roads and highways and. All these kind of things, you know, where you have a lot of uh, quick cars going around and you need some security. And this is these kind of water barrels over here. So I made them on my own. I made them in the game, which was a terrible decision since um, this single piece over here, which you can see on the top right hand, has 130 pieces. And trust me, I was copying that over quite a bit, as you can see right now. So. I fear that I do have to make this um, bottle, this water bottle, myself in the TMT. Maybe someone else can do this, I don't know if, if you are quick enough and uh, be you are able to do this quickly. I really would say I'm super welcome if you would do that, because this is terribly c destroying my frame rate. The overall go-kart track in the end will have about 9000 pieces, so it's not even blueprintable, which is a shame, and I am really upset because I didn't notice that in the first go. I noticed that yesterday when I was doing the um, yeah kind of refurbishment of all these areas with the TMT items, I was just noticing the frame rate dropped dramatically and I was like, okay, is it because of the TMT items? And it simply wasn't. It was only because of the go-kart strike. I just noticed that while going over the go-kart strike that the frame rate just dropped dramatically and I was like, what the hell is going on here? And then I just noticed that one of these water bells, um, e each single one of those has like 40 pieces in it. Which is insane, uh, since we, yeah, we would be able to easily do one on our own. But I wanted to have this really well-known shape, right? It, it's not this flat barrel going up and down the same dimensions. It, it really has a little bit of a uh, stomach, a little bit of a wider chest. So it, it goes wider in the middle part of it and goes a little bit more narrow to the down and top part. And this is really what I wanted to resemble because these are kind of these water barrels that you used to have on racetracks and everywhere. And I really wanted to incorporate that here because this is 
Again, this is really a measure of security and also this is one of the best ways to make a noise reduction since these things really catch up the noise. Um, usually what you need to do as well is, but I couldn't do that, I couldn't find a piece that would work like that, you would have like a rubber um, bend around this, like, like kind of um, a very thin um, kind of rubber thing that goes around these things combining them and you all also would have that on the walls and stuff But I don't have that uh, this at hand So again, this might be also a piece I need to model myself at some point because it really feels like I need to have this in here This this really makes those water bottles or these these water uh, water uh, cans or however barrels That's the word I was looking for uh, it really makes them connected And um, this is also very important since it has to act like a floating wall rather than single um, Barrels because if you have single barrels and a car would crash into them uh, There is a danger of getting stuck in there There's a danger of still rushing through because you if you hit just one barrel perfectly fine You would through yeah, you would go through the wall which is not our intention so Somehow these need to be connected and then you have this wonderful floating and this is exactly the idea behind these things uh, you create a very flexible but yet very secure wall of floating items so if you have this kind of rubber band around them uh, each single individual barrel is only a part of a chain and this chain absorbs the forces that go into it way better than only one would do and with the water in them they even have like um, somehow a, a mass in them if that makes sense to you that kind of absorbs the overall forces that go into it and they level it out So that's, that's basically why you will have a liquid in there The liquid is basically leveling out the forces that go into the wall um, and that makes the The impact for the driver and for for the wall way less intense than it would with a stiff wall or for example with only single pieces um, or even tires like this is why they tend to use more and more of these um, water filled barrel walls and also that makes these things also a lot more usable um, in these areas because you can easily exchange the water and stuff like that so it really is a good idea to have these all around your track and this is why I decided to do this and um, yeah getting into a point that also you guys mentioned in the last episode in the comments yes obviously there uh, is a lot of rain going on in Hawaii or on Hawaii and Yes, this is why it would absolutely make sense to use these water barrels since you can easily open the top while it's raining and it would actually catch the water and so you're good to go. So um, because it's also pretty hot in between, it definitely means that you would lose a lot of water in there or if you don't, uh, well, if you wouldn't open them every now and then, uh, I think no one want to even smell what this area would smell then somewhere in the future so you would need to exchange the water at some point and this is why I think it's a, it's a great idea to have these items here but anyways I, th I think I just talk enough about these water barrels um, let's talk about the rest of the little item over here and um, this is also why I use this uh, metal fencing behind it's always on the back side so cars don't crash into the metal fence it's just from back side to make the, a little bit of a better look but now this is a very important piece over here this is a little security light and since not always there is a security guard around there who can wave flags and so usually go-kart tracks do have these kind of security lights so as soon as there is an incident and you can't really tell where this is as a driver, these security lights go on and even they also go on when the session is over, they also go on when, um, for example, they need to stop for some reasons or whatever. So these security lights are usually positioned in a way that drivers can always see them from a point driving before going into a new area. So that means um, if there is like a, a danger ahead, which you can't really see, you would have these orange security lights going on and uh, it would tell the driver to slow down in this particular area of the track. Hence, this track is not really pretty big. It would potentially always be that, that every um, every light would turn on, but for the moment, it I think it's okay the way I have it. Um, it just helps to kind of display that this is a realistic uh, track and you, you would have these things everywhere. So we also need to focus a little bit on 
um, the energy supply. But as you can see, I was looking for these um, jerry cans. I couldn't remember the name, so I was always looking for them and searching for them, but couldn't really find them. But in the end, I just I just went over to another area to look up how they're called. And yeah, I basically wanted to put a lot of those in here because that's also some of the few reserves we have over here. So um, I also, as you may have seen a few seconds ago, there is also a little connector piece in our shed where the cars are stored in, all the carts. Um, but I also wanted to have these jerry cans because I believe we would have a lot of jerry cans on this island since in the in the past days of the park where the supply wasn't that well managed, it would have all been done with jerry cans and so I just put it there. Alright, so the basic layout about this thing is done and as I've already teased in the last episode, I wanted to have some plants around here that make sure that we have at, little, at least a little bit of, um, I don't know, uh, f fighting against pollution if that makes any sense. Um, obviously these, I, if I could, I would kind of recolor these things because they potentially wouldn't be that green any longer, but I wanted to have them there because it's, it's really important to make sure that, yeah, they're... The pollution is not too bad over here. Anyways, um, now you can see another thing I wanted to do, and this is one one thing I really don't like about the go-karts in Planet Coaster. They are dangerous AF. Like seriously, they're if you see the straight going really straight, and then it it, it narrows down to this single piece in in front of it uh, going into the track. That is pretty dangerous because we are not talking about pro drivers here we are talking about casuals and even people that drive the first time and they are not that as good as um, other people to drive carts and the having the track narrowing down at the end of the full throttle sp uh, straight is kind of dangerous and this is why I made these floating uh, walls to the left and right hand side of the um, start finish straight <coughs> to make sure that we at least have some security item there um, that would guide them at least back to the track and, you know, would not make it a very, very ugly accident if they just not hit the spot exactly. So I'm imagining that people who don't really have a glance or ha don't really know how to drive a cart, um, that they potentially would fear or would have um, the potential danger of going into the wall and this at a full speed, which is not really good. Anyways, you can see now that I'm trying to make the security slides work and uh, I have one issue here. This is... Like, I was doing this security light thing over here, as you can see, and it worked out fine in the end. Problem being is that I wanted to trigger this. This is why I used those lights and not the one in-game, which you can't trigger for whatever reason. Um, but the thing about this is I wanted to trigger that when the cards are going back into formation. The problem is you can't tell the trigger that it only does it on the last lap. It does it every lap and since it does it for every card it basically does it every time and this is not what I wanted so at night this is some some ugly uh, thing going on this is why I disabled this again unfortunately um, so I might also delete these things again it's a bit unfortunate um, I might just put a light below so that they are glowing at night but that's everything I can do about it it's a bit of a shame that would be a super nice addition actually for the trigger that you could decide on which lap it does trigger the event and maybe only for the first card going in but hey that's how it is yeah these flood lights we did in the last oh, couple of last episodes um, just work perfectly for this area so I decided to use them and I can only say I think they work just out very very good so as go kart tracks happen they um, at nights if they're not indoors they are not entirely lit I f I fear like the thing is I I really know it because I've, I've, I've driven a few times at night times and I was always surprised how less lit uh, these tracks usually are. So this is also why I put these uh, flood lights not everywhere, uh, actually I put them everywhere but they are not lighting the entire area, they are just lighting a little bit of it, uh, actually like let's say 70% of the track are pretty well lit but the rest of the track is not really dark but it's a tiny bit in the shadows. and. For me, as a passionate driver, I like this challenge because it um, it makes you um, having to adapt to the environmental uh, circumstances and as long as it's okay and as long as you can still see things, it's fine. But um, I like it more than having lit everything since um, like a very, very shiny bright track always um, is a little bit too much for my eyes. It's very 
it's very very heavy to drive then um, a, lo a long time in the bright light so this is really something I don't really like so this is why I put um, the lights not everywhere anyways talking of putting some stuff over here we are putting some TVs in here and these are not the usual Q TVs that you would see for other queues showing you the on-ride POV or whatever these are here to um, communicate the instructions and there is one thing I miss here and I will put in we are missing the briefing room because even on a park like that you couldn't just let everybody drive carts it's not possible they will they will destroy themselves they will destroy the carts so you would have um, you need to have a little briefing room and I'm feeling that I could put this right over here in the middle of those two I was just checking briefing rooms and by the way this is why it took a few minutes um, but we definitely need a briefing room. There is no way around it because people going on a go-kart track need to be briefed beforehand and especially if you can't really tell if they have driven before or not and you can't also trust people because if they're in a the park they want to drive quickly they won't tell you no no I need to have a briefing they will tell you yes 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 I drove a few times and five minutes later they hit the wall and I don't know break their neck so that's not what you want as a park you have to pay a lot of insurgents and stuff so nah, that's not what you want to do. Anyways, that's the end of this episode. Next episode will be, um, as I said, a little bit more into fixing, but we are still going on with the go kart track. There's a lot of stuff to do, but I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you in the next one as well. And make also sure to check out the Anno review. Until next time, have a great day and bye bye. Should be hiding out wherever we may find